We're going to solve quadratic equations using square roots, but these quadratic equations will have imaginary solutions. Um, so hopefully you've watched the video or at least have learned somewhere what imaginary solutions are, what imaginary numbers are. So these are going to be equations that end up having solutions that are imaginary numbers. All right, let's hop right into it. If we were to solve the equation x squared plus 4 equals 0, um, we could start by isolating the x squared because there's no x terms. All right, so if we were to subtract 4 from both sides, we get x squared equals negative 4. If we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get the square root of x squared equals the square root of negative 4. This side right here will give you the absolute value of x, because by definition when you square an unknown and then square root it, you get the absolute value equals square root of negative 4. Um, we can break up square root of negative 4 into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 4. And the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. And the square root of 4 is 2. So these two things multiply together. So this would be 2i. Um, the square root of the absolute value means distance from 0. So x is equal to a distance of 2i from 0. So you could either be 2i to the right of 0 or to the left of 0, meaning this could be positive or negative 2i. So this is x is equal to positive or negative. 2i. You could also write it like this, x equals 2i or x equals negative 2i. It means the same thing. Positive and negative means both positive and negative. Or you could write them separately like this. That's totally fine. Okay. Let's take a look at another example of uh, an equation that um, has an imaginary, I'm going to get rid of the title, that's fine, an equation that has um, an imaginary solution. So if we look at negative 3x squared minus 27 is equal to 0, okay? We want to isolate the x squared and bring the 27 over to the other side by adding it. So you end up getting 3x squared is equal to positive 27. Divide both sides by negative 3, so you get x squared is equal to negative 9. Take the square root of both sides. Square root of x squared equals the square root of negative 9. All right, this gives us absolute value of x. This gives us, there's two different numbers multiplied together that give you negative 9. One is negative 1, and then one is 9. This turns into an i. This turns into a 3. So absolute value of x is equal to 3i. Now, because there's absolute values, which means this could be a positive or a negative, we don't know which one, and we have to account for both of them, x is equal to positive or negative 3i. You could also say x equals 3i or x equals negative 3i. I'm going to use this notation going forward just for, um, it's, it's quicker, but they both, they mean the same thing. Okie dokie. Awesome. Uh, let's look at this example here. We have x squared equals negative 32. All right, so we're going to square root of both sides. It's already nice and uh, um, uh, isolated for us. So negative square root of 32. This side is easy. Get the absolute value of x. Okay. This side, um, we have a couple of things, right? We can do square root of negative 1 and the square root of 32. We can break 32 up, though. Uh, 32 is divisible by a perfect square. 32 is divisible by 16, and 16 is a perfect square. I carry this square root of negative 1 over here, and then this equals i, this is root 2, and then this is 4. All right, so these all multiply to negative 32. That's your kind of quick check to make sure that everything's okay. 16 times 2 times negative 1 equals negative 32. So all these things are fine. This is equal to i. This you can't do anything with. And this is 4. In, in uh, putting these in the order, so the number comes first, the nice number comes first, the letters come second, and then the square roots always come last. Okay. Uh, so to get the x out of the absolute values, we understand that the x could have originally been positive this or negative this. So x is equal to either positive or negative for i root 2, and there is our solution. Okay, uh, we're going to do two more. Now what happens when we have square root equations that the x is trapped inside of a set of parentheses, so something like this. 3 times x minus 4 squared is equal to negative 24. These ones are probably the longest. All right, first we got to divide by 3, so you get the x minus 4 squared is equal to negative 8. Then we're going to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. So this is the absolute value of x minus 4 is equal to square root of negative 8. 
So the square root of negative 8, um, we can break up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8, but 8 we can break up further into the square root of 4, which is a perfect square, square root of 2, which is not. So here are our three things. This becomes an i, this becomes a 2, and this becomes a root 2. Okay, So we have that x minus 4 is equal to positive or negative, number comes first, 2, then the letter i, and then the radical root 2. Positive or negative because of the absolute value. And we need to get the 4 onto the other side. This is not solved yet, so if we add 4 to the other side, we're going to get 4 plus or minus 2i root 2. It is very important that you put this number, whatever is here, put it in front of the plus or minus because we don't want to put it afterwards. It's not being added and subtracted. This is only positive, so it's got to go in front of this. And this is our solution. x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2i root 2. Okay, we'll do one more. Let's do, ooh, craziness, fractions, everybody's favorite. Negative 1 half uh, x plus 1 quantity squared. Uh, we'll do plus 1 equals 26. Okay, so first step, you could either multiply by negative 2 or subtract 1. Subtracting 1, I think, is a little bit easier, so we're going to do that. Negative 1 half x plus 1 squared equals 25. Then we're going to multiply this side by negative 2. So when we multiply this by negative 2, negative 2 times negative 1 half is just 1. We're going to multiply this side by negative 2 as well. So we get x plus 1 quantity squared is equal to negative 50. Okie dokie. We're going to take the square root of both sides. We're going to get the absolute value of x plus 1 on this side equals square root of negative 50 over here. Uh, we're going to separate the negative 1 from the 50. Okay. And that's supposed to be 50. Yeesh. Uh, 50 has, is divisible by a perfect square. Uh, so 25 is a perfect square. And 25 times 2 is 50. Uh, just carry over that negative 1. So square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of 2, we're just going to leave there. So x, oops, uh, let's just get rid of that because we know that it's going to be, um, to get rid of the absolute value, we're going to have to have a positive and negative over here. So x plus 1 equals positive or negative. Number comes first, 5. Letter comes second, i. And then square root comes last, 2. And then we got to get rid of the 1, so we're going to subtract it from both sides. It's going to be x is equal to, when we subtract it, it's going to be negative 1, but again, it has to go in front of the plus or minus. Plus or minus 5i radical 2. There's our answer. That's it.